What's going on everybody, it's Eric Ray with a back here helping you take your game to the next level. And in today's video I'm going to be going over 3 tips that will help improve your defense overnight in Madden 18. Now if this is your first time checking out one of my videos, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. Make sure to hit the bell icon so that you join the notification squad and never miss an upload. So like I said, we're going to be going over 3 tips that will help improve your defense in Madden 18. Uh, some of these things I've just been getting asked constantly in the comments section uh, by a lot of people. And some of these may seem basic to some of you, but you'd just be surprised at how many people don't know how to do certain things or contain certain things. So I'm going to go over those in this video. So the first thing that you need to know if you don't know already is that cover four is the best base defense in Madden 18. And the reason for this is because it contains the run and the pass. And it's the only coverage that does that, does that effectively. So... Obviously, cover four by default is going to, you know, defend the pass well. You got seven or eight guys in coverage. You have an adequate amount of guys in coverage to cover the receivers. But the thing that makes it different is that it defends the run well, and that's because the safeties are in run fit. So if you're wearing like a cover two man or cover two, uh, cover three, the safeties at the snap of the ball, they're going to start backpedaling like this. And then once the running back gets the ball, then they're going to run down attack and try to come make a play. In a cover four, these safeties are just going to stand still. They're not going to move. And then when the running back gets the ball, they're going to attack. So they hit the box pretty much immediately when the running back gets the ball. So it, it's harder. It makes it harder to block everybody because you have two players or one, you know, depending on what coverage you're in. If you were like in a cover three, one safety would typically be in the box. But you, you're able to keep kind of both of them in the box and get them there quickly, making it an extra person that has to be blocked. So when I run cover four as a base defense, what I do is I base the line, which is wire triangle and then right on the left stick and then I like to shade underneath because I like hard flats on the field so I'll go wire triangle and then down on the right stick and what you want to do is you want to try to like manually walk the safeties down a little bit because they're going to typically start about back here you want to just kind of walk them down a couple yards just get them in the box get them closer to the line of scrimmage and when you go to run the ball it's going to be a lot harder to to get big yards here I mean yeah we got about three yards there but it's going to be hard to break big runs consistently on cover four and that's because if you look at these safeties up here, you're going to see, notice how they have not moved. They have not moved. They have not moved. Okay. Running backs getting the ball and now they're attacking. Now they're, now they're, oh, that was bad camera angle. Let me back out a little bit. So they're not moving. They're not moving. They're not moving. As soon as the running back gets the ball, now they start attacking. And because of that, these guys, like you see, Fuller has to go block that, that safety. This lineman has to worry about the safety on the left. It's freeing up one of these linebackers to come in and make a play. And that's why cover four is so good at containing the run. Now, if you think they're going to run like a toss or a stretch to the outside, you want to bring the safeties down, but you want to slide them out just a little bit too. Now, only slide them out if you really think they're going to run outside because it just helps contain the edge. It helps them set the edge a little bit better. They run down, and you see, like, we have two guys free here to make a tackle because that safety took up a blocker on the outside. And then on the off chance of your opponent passes, well, you have seven or eight guys in coverage, you're good. You're not going to be giving up any huge gains because you still have a decent amount of coverage. Whereas if you're, like, trying to blitz to stop the run or something and they pass or they call a play action, you're going to be out of luck. So the next thing I want to go over, which this is probably the my most – this is the comment I get the most by far, and it's crazy to me that people don't know how to do this yet, but I'm always getting asked, you know, like, how do you contain mobile quarterbacks? How do you stop people from getting outside of the pocket and just spamming all game and running the ball? And it's it's really not hard, and like I said, I'm surprised that more people don't know this, but let's, let's go over it. So if you're just in, like, a regular base defense, you know, regular pass rush on the field, it's going to be very hard to contain a quarterback from getting outside the pocket like this and picking up huge yards. Now, yeah, if you have, like, amazing defensive ends or edge, edge rushers, you might get a block shed sometimes, and, they, and they'll manually, like, see, like, there, he block shed it, and that was good. He block shed it, we lost yards, but you don't want to rely on that because you'll see I'm going to run it a few more times, and he's likely not going to block shed like that again. See, he block sheds there, but we're already, we've already got outside the edge. If you have a fast quarterback, and Bud Dupree is one of the faster linebackers, he can't chase us down. It's really hard to contain when you have a regular pass rush. See how you like swim move to the inside? That's going to happen typically on a regular pass rush. They're going to try to rush inside. And you're going to see, I'll do it one more time. It's just too easy to get outside the pocket. Way too easy. So how you stop this is you want to put contains on the field. A lot of people for some reason don't know how to put contains on the field. So if you don't know, you want to hold the LT or L2 button and then press the RB, R1 button. Now you have contains on the field. It's literally almost impossible to get to the outside now. You see we try to get to the outside. They break off contain and just he lit Watson up in the backfield there. Should have been a fumble, honestly, but we'll try again. 
they're gonna set that edge they're never gonna try to get inside their only job is staying outside you can't get outside the pocket now it's not happening we'll try one more time every time we're losing four or five yards every single time so the next thing this is kind of like a part two to this tip most people that want to run around with quarterbacks just want to run outside the pocket it feels more natural that's what they want to do but a little bit more of an experienced or you know better player will try to start running up the middle now there the contain actually got off the uh the blocker and, and prevented me from doing that but you're going to see a lot of times you leave this middle open i don't know why the qb stopped like that but they leave that middle open and you're able to get up to the middle like that i'll do it one more time to show you so yes we can't go to the outside but we can go up this middle like that and get yards that way so if someone's doing that you need to also put a spy on the field. So you have your contains, the outside's locked up. Now you want to put a spy, preferably your fastest linebacker. So you do that by pressing A or X and then left on the right stick. Now you have a spy on the field. So now they can't get to the outside and they also cannot get up the middle. If they try to get up the middle, that spy's there. You see that he's not going anywhere. Yeah, he might get a couple yards, but you live with that. He's going to get hit. He might fumble the ball a lot of times. So most people, the contains will be enough because they just want to run outside. But if you play someone with a little bit better stick and they know how to run up the middle, Put a spy on the field, and you don't have to worry about scrambling quarterbacks anymore. Like I said, I feel like that should be common knowledge, but it's not to a lot of people. So if you didn't know, now you know. The last thing is something else that I, I get asked a lot, and people are sometimes struggling with this, and it's what to do in like a no huddle situation. So a lot of people hate no huddle. They they you know they say it's cheese or like you know it, it's just a bum tactic. I hate people to no huddle. I mean I hate people to no huddle too. It's just kind of annoying to play against people that no huddle, but it's common you're gonna see it so you need to know what to do you don't want to panic in a no huddle situation if, if they catch you in a defense you don't like you need to get out of it but you don't want to over adjust because then you try to over adjust you might get stuck on a defensive lineman get stuck on the, the wrong player get stuck on a cornerback or something that you don't want to be on and then you're going to be taken out of the play you won't be able to use her over the middle or do what you have to do so you need to make the adjustment but you don't want to panic and like try to make too many adjustments so let's say you come out in this cover three blitz you know you're trying to get some pressure off the edge or whatnot and they just hit you to the flats, bam, hit them to the flats, got 12 yards, they no huddle, like, all right, I like this defense he's in, so they no huddle again, you're in the same defense, now they hit you to the other flat, get another solid game, he dropped the ball, but should have been 10 yards, so they keep no huddling, if you don't get out of that defense, he's going to hit you to the flats, down the field, all the way to the end zone, so there's a couple things you can do, one, you can play underneath coverage, because, okay, he keeps hitting you to the flat, so you can stay in the same defense, but you could shade underneath, which is why our triangle down on the right stick. Now you're shading underneath, so now you try to quick pass to the flats. Oh, he's expecting the flats. Now it's a pick. Now you're going for six the other way, because a lot of times when people catch you in a defense that uh, you don't like, or that, or that they do like, because they're seeing that where they want to attack is wide open, they're going to keep running it, and they're just going to keep premeditating where they want to go. Like, oh, the flats are open two plays in a row. I'm throwing to the flats again. You need to make a switch. So another thing you can do is you can pull up your audibles, which you do by pressing square or X, and now you see your audibles pop up. So if they're killing you to the flats, you go to a Tampa 2. Or say they were killing you over the deep middle with a post, and you need a deep zone over that middle, you go to a cover 3. But in this example, they're playing cover 2, so we're like, or they're going to the flats. So we want to play a cover 2. So we can leave the cloud flats on the field, which you'll still leave the flats open, but they won't be wide open. So you made the switch to cover 2. Now you try to go throw to the flats. Didn't get picked, but that's not a good throw. Now, if you want to be a little bit more risky and you really think they're going to go to the flats, you can audible to the cover two and then, of course, shade them underneath, wire triangle, and down on the right stick. Now, now you got hard flats. So they try to throw to the flats. Again, you're getting picked, and you're going the other way for a touchdown. That's all you got to do in no huddle situations. Wherever they're trying to attack, whatever they like about your defense, maybe they're running the ball on you, and they like that. So now you want to audible to something that, that's not a blitz. Maybe you go to, like, a cover two. And maybe you pinch your defensive line because they're running up the middle. And you want to bring people a little bit more inside to, you know, scare them off from running. Whatever they like about your defense and it's making them no huddle, all you have to do is just make the switch. You want to make the simple switch. You don't want to over adjust because that's when you get caught in bad positions and that's not good. So if you're dealing with no huddle, either audible to a play that defends the area of the field they're trying to go to or shade your coverage to defend what they're trying to do. If they're going flat, shade underneath. If they're killing you with like a corner route, shade over top and that's it you'll get them out of the no huddle or you know sometimes you're just caught in a play that you you might not be able to get to the right play that you need and you might just need to take a time out take the time out don't let them just effortlessly go down the field on you that's not good it's all about putting your players in position to succeed so that's it for today's video if you didn't know those three tips add them to your game and i guarantee you you will have a lot more success on defense uh 
you know, it's just it's just more so like a good practices thing. If you don't practice these kind of things, uh, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be vulnerable in certain areas of the game. So this is just like a best practice kind of thing. Like make sure that you're familiar with these things so that when you get caught in the middle of the game, you're not struggling like, oh, I don't know how to stop this in game. If you already know how to do it, then you're good to go. So if you enjoyed this video, as always, just drop a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.